No, it is. But, but it's like with everything. I mean, um, it's 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 collecting data when you fight. It's collecting data. It's like people who are stuck in gyms where the the top dog, and they're just pummeling people and that, and it just doesn't. It's, they're not prepared to get digged when he when he finally he meets someone who can who just does something. They don't have to be supreme. They just do something different. They're not expecting. So always put yourself because I used to travel around gyms all the time. I was always in stranger danger, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how friendly someone is. You walk into their gym to spar with them, train with them. They're going to put it on you. It's just a it's just a thing. Even though it's friendly, and it's all they put on you, and it just it doesn't half help people's mentality. People get comfortable walking through that same door. That same doorway all the time, fighting with the same people, and um, it doesn't hold you in good stead. I would say be like a like a Ronan and travel a little bit. Yeah, I mean, what I'll do is I, I, I'll leave going through your story and like what what you you roots were and that because obviously it's embedded in the wrestling and I want to talk about your luchador stuff later on. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, I'll speak to you about that then. But what are you saying about training and that? I mean. I know from having spoke to you before and seeing little bits and bobs of you online and stuff like that. So you were just sort of at the start of Bisping's career and Tom Blackledge trying to push into, you were at the Wolf Slayer at that time as main sparring partner before you got picked up for the Ultimate Fighter, weren't you? Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what was that like sparring at that level, Tom Blackledge and, and Bisping? Like, were you, were you going in there getting your ass handed to you or were you keeping up? No, no, it just, it just depends where people are in the, um, in the camp. I mean, the worst thing you could do in the Wolf Slayer was have, like, be injured and come back in. Mm. I, I don't time I really got, like, um, I never got ever done in my life. Um, <laughs> so there. <laughs> no, but the only time I ever got, like, come back in. Um, when you come back in, like, you've had an injury. Because I remember one of the lads fell into my knee and it popped um, a medial ligament. And I came back in after it was only, like, three weeks. And, oh, God, I just felt like my fitness had just been, like, it just took my soul out of me. I just couldn't do anything. I was just hugging people and holding on and getting punched and kicked in the kites and the, just holding on, just like clock watching that. But that's, that, I think that's about it. But it was good. I mean, we were all young then. We were all still learning. Like I say, it's about data collection. You've got to keep getting hit with like caught in moves and, and you've got to be hit with punches and hit with kicks and knees and taking down and taking people down. It's just, it's just a nice punch of that. I think we were all lucky to fall in because we just got dragged in. I mean, Anthony McGambro was, was clever. He really was watching the scene closely and he handpicked all of us to be in that gym. He just poached people. Like yeah. at the first time I met, met Tom, we were, didn't even know about each other with drill moves, didn't even know about Bisping. Just started doing a bit of wrestling on the fence and it was, um, it was, it was just, it, it was really good at first. It was exciting. It was just not, it's not like now you're going to a gym, you know what, you, you know what it, it, an MMA career entails, but when we went there, none of us had a clue what was going on. So it was, it was exciting, it was good. It, it was renowned, the Wolf Slayer, like anybody around the, the North West. The amount of kids I had who used to say to me, I've been training up at Wolf Slayer, and you'd look at them and go, you're just talking <laughs> about your ass. You haven't been there, or if you have, you, you went and did the pay one day, and that's it. You're not... Yeah, what they do... It was renowned as the gym, like, wasn't it? Yeah, well, what, what it is, it was, it was public of a night, and that's what most people said. Because I remember, like, <laughs> I, the, the classic, you know I'm going to say about working on the door, yeah. Someone went, hey, I do MMA in the, in the Wolf Slayer. <laughs> I just, I, I, uh, I used one of my, my mate's famous quotes. <laughs> I said to the kids, just give me five minutes while I shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but it's, it, but then I had a word and said, he said, I've never seen you in there. But what, you don't go? But because we went in the day, we were in the pro team from day one of the day. Mm-hmm. And not many of the pro lads, uh, like, went of a night. Um, to be honest, the training was that hard. I didn't ever want to train of night. I think we'd go in and roll and sp- or spar or something, if we could be asked. But I think we just trained local because, like, Bisping was from Clitheroe and uh, Tom's from Wigan, which wasn't too far from Witness. I wasn't too far from Witness, but we branched away, so we didn't really see each other of a night as well. So it was like we did have, like, a different clientele uh, of a night who didn't even know about the lads existing of a day. I, I remember, like... I was training there, and like there was like lads like when Bisping first got there uh, known, and and uh, Tom was on um, a case rage. He was um, like the kids were excited, waiting for him to come in. Oh, are they going to come in? Are they going to come in? But no, but mate, he's training of a day. He went of a day. Yeah, it's like, but the kids weren't allowed in. It was good. Yeah, but that's like for anything, mate. You turn up to any gym, the protein doesn't really train with the people who walk through the door unless there's someone you know. Yeah. 
It was just, it, it was just, it, I tell you what was fantastic about it. It was just literally, you never knew who was training there uh, week in, week out. It was, um, I remember, like, I remember being in the shower and I'd only watched Dean Freeman, like, fighting. Mm. And then, like, the fact that I turned around to get out the shower and the big tattoo, the machines there in the, like, in the shower with us. It's crazy. And then, um, like, Antonio Silva, but he wasn't fit. He wasn't, he went near the UFC then. But, um, yeah, we all refused to get a shower with Antonio because there was something on his person that was probably the size of your arm. So it just made us all feel a little bit une yeah. uneasy. Don't, <laughs> um, don't yeah. Yeah, no, it's like you just start questioning your manhood. You, you just look at yourself and go, Yeah, what have I got to offer? Like, short, living, short like... and thick does the trick, lad. Short and thick does the trick. <laughs> <laughs> the thing you always just say, um, Yeah, it was weird. And I remember I was some uh, with someone in there was doing this crash, like crash dieting all the time. I just uh, when I'm not in camp, because I, 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 I'm against all that get, camp. I get it when someone does like they've got eight weeks to get ready for a fight, so they just do nothing but that. I get that. But I used to train all the time because I like training. Yeah. Didn't have to just be fighting. I just like training. And like even Bis Bisping's on it. He only trained for camps. He never trained any extra. He just trained when he came for camps. I think because he had like a lifetime of martial arts. Uh, prob probably and that was his job. I understand that. But I just took over. I just I was addicted to grappling at the time. And um so I was always training. So um yeah, this kid's like, yeah, after um, after so and so, I'm gonna uh, after this fight, I'll have a uh, three weeks off now. Come back in, uh, I'll just eat loads of fucking Burger King, and then I'll I'll go on this mad keto diet. I was like, you've got to stop the cash coursing, uh, um, cash dieting. I said because you're um, I said your skin will fucking all fill out when you've got a belly, and then come back in, and your skin won't catch up. I said, I and this I, this was no shit, no way of a lie. I said you'll end up with a belly flap like Rico Rodriguez. This what I said to him, and then and then Rico Rodriguez just popped his head down and said, "Who just said my name?" I was like, I can't believe me. He was like, "He just turned up that day." I was like, "Oh, that was me. I heard you were coming." It was like, "Oh, it was so weird." It's like, but that's that, mostly it was like that all the time. It was mad because I remember when I seen that he, he fight Robbie Lawler, and then within like a month he was he, he in our Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, well, he came up when um like uh, Rampage and stuff came up. Yeah, yeah. Thing, yo, the, um, yeah. <laughs> Heavy. Yeah. I don't think he ever smiled in real life either, you know. That's he. I don't think he smiled. But the, the um, big thing with that fight was that apparently he was like rinsing Robbie Lawler, calling them shit, and then just got his fucking eyebrow took off, and it was like yeah. one of the biggest sorts of revenge acts. I don't know how true it is, but... Yeah, yeah just... Um, yeah, it, it, it's a weird vibe. Um, I mean, I don't like... I know people have a strange aversion to stuff that happens in training, but we met a, a an absolute tool who came over with a rampage called Lunchbox. <laughs> That's his nickname, Lunchbox. I'd love him to listen to this. He was just like he came in bouncing around dead lively. Hey, English guys, we're going we're uh, us Yanks gonna show you. And he was saying Yank is a piss take, because that's what like yeah. Because he doesn't you know I mean don't call themselves that. And he's like, oh, we're gonna show you how to wrestle, how to grapple, how to do all this real UFC shit. He's like, sounds and then there's another Brazilian coach who came over with um Rampage and he was speaking to Mario. Mario was like bum mumbling some but they were saying and he, he went ah, and he both laughed and then he said, uh, lunchbox, roll with Dave. <laughs> so I got on with him. And I literally tapped him about 30 times in three minutes. I know it sounds a lot, but it was like it was around about that. I'd say twenty-eight. Then it was like ridiculous, and he 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 went a little bit quieter after that. Yeah, mate. There's not ways of walking in with an ego like that's. It's just yeah. asking for trouble, lads. Why do people do it? Like I had um, I had a fantastic um, pure freestyle wrestling. Um, like um, about I don't know about twenty minutes of wrestling with Gerald Gerald Harris, and he was a Division One wrestler in America, and he was just it was just lovely adulation after it. Like he was just like man, fucking I didn't know people over here knew how to wrestle. I was like, I've been wrestling since I was eleven. Like, <laughs> that's what I mean, yeah. I got I wrestled in the snake pit, and I mean we had a proper. It was like an underbelly of wrestling in this country, but we had we had top end wrestlers. People don't even realize in nineteen ninety three. Uh, Roy Wood from the Snake Pit took a team over to Japan to show the catch of Lancashire, and I was like, that was like my thing I wanted to do. Like, like ninety three, I was thirteen, so I was like, that was I was looking up to that. Going, that's 
oh, I'd love to do that. And like me wrestling hero, Joey Guile, who still lives in Kirby, strongest man I've ever met. Mm. Um, he, he had two bouts over there as well. It's like, it's fucking excellent. People don't know about the stuff that existed before MMA. And I was a big part of all of this weirdness. You know what I mean? Like Paul Hoon and Joey Guile went over to Japan to fight Pancrease originally <clears throat> and mm. ended up walking into a pro wrestling version of it. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> just didn't understand it. But it, it, it that was a... Uh, that's probably a story for another time. 